What's going on miners? Chump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy, having a great day. I know in the last video I talked about my solar trailer and possibly moving these solar panels into another location. I'm still going to be doing that at some point, but on this video I want to talk about why I'm going to be leaving the lithium iron phosphate batteries inside this solar trailer. All right, so here is my current setup. You can see all the batteries right here on the rack. I was potentially going to move these into the house, but Thinking about it a little longer overnight, these batteries right here, even though they are safe to have in the house, I'm still not going to do it only because my family's way more important than a bunch of batteries not charging or potentially getting harmed. I can replace those, I can't replace the family. But in this video, this grow watt inverter, as you guys can see, I have done some work. These are 120 volts home outlets from the meter box. I got these all wired up and ready to go to turn on these CPU mining rigs. I am super excited about it and I can't wait to do it. And also, thank you so much to Mr. Yeti for sending over this Wi-Fi hotspot. Now I don't have to run ethernet cables to all of these rigs. Super pumped. But I've been waiting for this moment long enough. We're gonna plug this guy in right now, which is going to power up two rigs, but I'm only gonna turn one on. All of the BIOSes have been completely wiped out. So we need to plug this in. I need to hook up a screen. We need to get into the BIOS. I'm gonna show you guys what you need to do overclock wise for CPU mining. So more or less, this is just gonna be a small guide to get you guys right there. You might have to do a little bit of tweaking at some point, but either way, just got this unit plugged in right here. Now what we need to do before we turn on the PSU, you guys need to have some sort of GPU for display if you're using AMD rigs and you don't have a G in the CPU name, like a 5700G instead of a 3900X. You know, an X doesn't have onboard graphics, but the G does. So in this case, I don't have any G CPUs. I need to use this GT. 710 which is a no powered it just gets powered by the riser exactly like the a2000 or the uh, 16 slot rather on the board that's what powers this little guy and it's going to output to the monitor so we can do all the bio stuff so let's get this thing plugged in it's just going to dangle this thing's light enough it doesn't put too much weight on it now i need to get the hdmi plugged into the tv so give me one second all right, just plug the TV in, got it all plugged into the motherboard. I have the keyboard plugged in right here to the USBs, which is directly in front, and it's all sitting on my vacuum, nice and sturdy, right? <laughs> Let's turn this thing on, get this thing fired up, and now we gotta spam the delete key to get this thing to get us into the BIOS. All right, so we're into the BIOS successfully. Real quick, the wattage on this and the screen, 95 watts between the CPU mining rig and the screen, but obviously that's not mining. So we want this rig to be around 100 watts, and that's the entire reason we're gonna be getting into the BIOS here. Now let me find all of the things in here that we need to change and I'll go over each one individually because all BIOSes are different. So the things might be in different places. All right, first thing, CPU core ratio. In this BIOS, it's in the AI tweaker. Right there, you can see it's set to 38. So you wanna have it at 38 or 3800. As far as I know, you can see the ratio right there is set to 38. Then the next thing we're gonna do is go down to the memory frequency. This is the RAM that you have in your system. The RAM that I have in this system is DDR4 3200CL14. So you can see the CL14 doesn't matter right now at this point. You can't change that, but the 3200 you can change. So obviously if you click on the drop down, you can see that it gives you all of the options to change this. So you need to choose the right one for your CPU mining rig. Next, if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see DRAM voltage. I was told to put this at 1.35. So that's what I did. You might have to change it off of auto and go to manual mode, just like this. Go to manual mode and then you can change these numbers down here. In addition to changing the DRAM voltage to the 1.35, you wanna put the CPU core voltage override to one. Now precision boost overdrive, you wanna get into this. So we're gonna hit enter. And then what we're going to do is go down to it and we're going to disable precision boost overdrive. If you're just using this for like a CPU mining rig, you can shut off all the audio controls and all that stuff. Obviously, I still need the Wi-Fi on because I'm using Wi-Fi with that guy right there. So I'm going to keep that on, but I'm going to shut off this right here. Just disable that drop down because I don't need any audio. All right, so over here in advanced, I found the APM configuration. You click on that. You wanna to go to power on or restore on AC power loss. So I'm going to enable that. As you can see, it already says power on. 
That's what we need because, again, if the power is shut off to this unit or you have like a breaker trip or something, as soon as you pop that breaker back, this will automatically turn back on. And then you can go through and like little things like this, the rogue effects, you can click on that and you can see it says onboard LED right there. I have it disabled because you really don't need the LEDs on. I mean, it looks cool and stuff on the cooler, but I could shut those off. It's just a waste of electricity, to be honest. I think I have everything pretty much situated. I'm just going to save the changes and reset. As you can see, all of my stuff has already been saved prior. So I'm just going to click OK. And then we're going to let this thing boot up and get it into Hive. I absolutely love that I actually have one rig on. Hive is starting to boot up right now. So I need to connect it to the Wi-Fi, obviously, right there. And that's just, you know, inside Hive. But either way, this is going to keep the batteries warm during the winter. And if I need to, what I'm going to do is I actually ran a spare wire into the trailer when I did the um, whole trailer build. If you guys haven't seen that video, go check it out. I'll leave a link above. But literally, I have an extra wire so I could just plug it into one of these outlets and run it backwards into the house so i have power off of the solar and off of the batteries for inside the house i mean i think that's a good idea but either way let's get this thing to wi-fi i'm just going to type in wi-fi so down in the bottom they give you a bunch of different options where you can put numbers in and then i'm going to uh type in the password so we're all hooked up to wi-fi and the only thing that sucks is i totally forgot i deleted all of these cpu mining rigs off of my account when i sent them all to be hosted so i need to take this m.2 out and go get it back onto my farm i'm gonna get all of these up and running at some point as you can see i took the gpu out and i actually got this thing up and running on vertcoin and it is at 79 watts which is amazing so if i can get all of these rigs running at 80 watts or so between 80 and 100 i think we'll be in really good shape on this solar setup so let me know what you guys think what do you think i should mine should i leave it on vertcoin or something else leave it in the comments below appreciate you guys for watching peace